this video, I'm going to show you how I got this Polar 350 working on light burn. Now, you have to first plug in the USB for the uh, Polar 350, and then go to light burn and the devices and set up a new device and let it scan right here and it will find it. I'll show you in a second. But one thing I want to tell you is that if you're running light burn for a diode laser, you're probably going to have to update it to a version for the um, for this Ohm Tech Polar. Uses a completely different controller. So there you can see the you know light burn. Once you send it out looking for the device, if it finds the controller, it will load it. And you have two cho choices, and I'm using the serial USB here. I have tried the packet one, and that also worked too. So I'm not sure the difference, but I think this is the one you're supposed to use. Give it a name, Polar 350. Check that the size is right. Check that the origin is right. The right rear. And there it is. And you can see it shows up there. So now I'll go down to that and click on Polar 350, and there you are. You're all set up, talking to the um, to the Ohm Tech Polar, and ready to go. Now I'm going to show you here. I just clicked on the camera just to. I plugged in the USB port for the camera also, and you can see that it actually uh, shows up there. So I'm going to go into here and try to calibrate the camera. And there it is, shun come, it comes out. And do a full calibration. And that's what you see. You do see the, you know, the picture on the camera. And then you have to go print out, go to light burn and print out the dot pattern used for calibration. Now I printed it out one to one as it came off of the light burn uh, file. And I tried several times and it would not recognize a pattern. So I went back to, did some searches, and I found out that it looks like you're supposed to print it out a smaller size. Um, I tried 5x7 like was recommended on one post I read eventually. So you can see uh, all the times I tried to capture with the full size image in there, it did not work at all. Got no response. So there's the 5x7 um, one I printed out finally. And I tried capturing that, and I got completely different um, results every time I pushed the capture button, even without moving it. And I did wind up spending three hours trying to get this captured right. But I, I, never, I never could get it right. I'll show you in a little while. So I'm probably going to have to do another video when I do get some good instructions on, you know, how to set this up and stuff. But, you know, right now I did, uh, I messed with it for three hours, and... Had very little luck, especially when trying to do the uh, outside corners. And I did have to uh, pay, put this on a piece of cardboard eventually to um, be able to hold it up on an angle and, you know, get it to recognize a couple of times. But you can see my scores are all coming out, you know, like 8, 9, 10, and up. So I just kept opening it up, moving it around, and, um, you know, I did put it on some flat cardboard eventually. And I got it pretty close, I guess. So now one thing you have to do is manual focus this before you go to this step. So you're ready to print. So then I'm going to do the camera alignment now. And for this one, you just have to put in the specs of, you know, what you can, what you use for engraving. To put the marks on the uh, actual uh, piece of three millimeter basswood that you're going to Great. So I just used uh, 30 for the fill in the line power here and a speed of 200. And so you can either click the up and down arrows or you can just type it in either way you want to go. And then go back and frame it and you'll see the laser frame the area. And then I, once you know it's, you know, it looks right, hit the start button. <clears throat> now I did, at this point, I did have problems, and I'll show you in a little while exactly what it was, but a couple times I hit the, I kept getting this notice there was a problem sending data to the laser, and it turns out that um, it was a switch on the laser, I'll show you in a couple seconds. 
So there it is. Uh, problem sending data to it. And not to move, the little button was lit up right around it there. So I had to turn it off and reset it. And one thing I'll show you is uh, here's the camera right there. That's what we're trying to calibrate. And when you reset this unit, the um, focus actually goes back to the 17 millimeter. You can see that that G goes all the way up. And I did remove the cover here because it's impossible to see if you move the lens down to the focus position with it on. I pretty much am running with it off. But I did, um, I did finally figure out what it was and got it to print out the pattern. Now I'm going to have to go through this all again and I'll probably do a better video about this area once I, you know, see exactly what went wrong and the pro proper way to do it because there are no instructions included. Once that's printed out, you have to move the um, laser out of the way so the camera can see them. And then you just have to go put the uh, red dot on where they are and that's supposed to be calibrated. So calibration is done. And this is the problem that I had. When you pull the drawer out, there's this little switch down there. And if you see that little aluminum bracket there, it's angled up. Now that pushes the drawer up over the switch when you push it in all the way. So what I had to do is bend that little lever on the switch up a little bit just to make it so that the switch would click. And every time you push that drawer in, you know, listen for the click on the switch. Otherwise, you'll get that error message. So this is what mine looks like. You can see it's not really calibrated right, but I just wanted to show you. Um, I put a piece of six millimeter plywood or uh, birch plywood on there. And I'm going to locate this little snowflake pattern over it. I like to use this one for a test for cutting. And then I'm going to focus it. You see, I put in the 11 millimeters there and then I drop the head. So it's not really autofocus on this, as they say. You have to manually put the number in and hit the down to focus it every time. And there you can see I'm, I'm running the cut. Now this is 6mm plywood. And I tried using uh, the 60mm the second that they said. But it didn't quite go all the way through. There you can see um, it just uh, didn't quite cut all the way through. So I went back and I upped it to 65 millimeters a second and that seemed to um, solve my problem so the the settings on mine do not match some of the other ones that I, I've seen on videos but there you can see you know the you can pretty much see that other pattern cut in it and stuff but it's really the camera really does need a better calibration and it does do a nice job of cutting, you can see there. Only um, one little problem at the start of each cut, which I'll show you in a little while. But that went down up to 65, I did get a, a real nice cut. You can see it's a real tight cut to get out of here, but you know, edges are nice and dark brown, not too burnt or anything, so it does do a good job once you um, get the settings figured out. So then I decided I was going to try an engraving and I took that uh, sunflower artwork that I use a lot of time and started engraving and I had problems again. The laser stopped moving. Um, this time the problem was my own. It turns out that when you start the laser, sometimes in light burn when you're doing engraving, it overruns on the burn and then to reverse its direction. Well, if it overruns the zero zero, the machine will stop and nothing will happen. So I went back and I just moved the uh, artwork off of that zero zero a little bit. So you're actually, um, you know, really have to watch a light burn when you set this up. And here you can see it's just doing a beautiful job of engraving in a piece of the um, three millimeter basswood there. And let's just cut this out. And that just came out gorgeous. You can see nice. Nice collar, edges aren't burnt or anything. And there it is. I, I, I turn the machine off and reset it every time I'm going to change material thickness. And then I can work from there and down. And then I noticed my power settings were different, so I decided I was going to do a power line test and recommended by another a video on another channel. 
So I just drew up lines from 10% power up in 5% increments and just started running the, the test and at each, each line I recorded the reading of milliamps that I got on the little gauge there. So I just watched that and I wrote down the milliamps so I could compare it to others. And you can see as the power goes up, the milliamps go up. And you can actually see there's like a black spot at the beginning of each um, burn going in. And I'll show you that, what causes that in a little while too. But I did uh, engrave the readings that I got. So that's going to be my permanent plaque. So I know, you know, what power levels I'm running at. And I can try to keep it within the longer life ranges. So you can see at 10% um, it doesn't even turn on. And then it tops out at 26 milliamps there. One of my subscribers sent me a um, artwork for a ornament that he wanted me to see if I could cut with this, so I did. And first, I'm going to show you this thing is quite noisy when you're working. Uh, when you first turn it on, doing nothing, it's you know it's in the 60 decibel range. Then it goes up into like 72. Once it starts running, it goes you know it does go way up. Um, and there's no way to turn off the fan or turn off the pump or turn off anything. It just while it's sitting there and you're working on light burn or doing artwork, it's just sitting there burning power. So, you know, hopefully we'll find a way to, to shut that down when it's sitting idle. But you can see it's quite loud. And over where I have my computer, it's really loud. It's like almost 80 decibels over there. There's an intake underneath, so I'll sit under that radiator that I think causes it noise. Um, that's not a good spot to put it and probably not going to do good if you've got a quiet office either. But you can, you can see, you know, pretty much doing a good job except for at the beginning of each cut. Um, oh, so you can see I get a burn section and pork cutting at the beginning of each one. And that appears to be from the time it takes to turn on the actual air assist pump and get it running. It appears there's a couple second delay from the time the light burn turns the air assist on to the time that air starts coming out. So I'm hoping there's a way to put a delay in the cut before, you know, to wait until the pump winds up at least uh, for this because uh, everything else cut beautiful. And here you can see it all. You know, that's some really fine artwork on a 1.5 millimeter plywood there. And you have to really gently uh, get them out of there but you can see that one area where it started there I can't get those two little pieces out the first two cuts because the air assist was not actually working at that time so I've got that burned area with the two parts that won't pop out so that's something that you know hopefully we can work out with light burn to get a delay in there but otherwise it came out beautiful once it was running you can even see you know no real burning or anything else just did a beautiful job so, um, you know, it looks like it's, it's going to be good for really fine detail work also. So then my wife needed a couple more of those tags for the little animals that she makes to give away. And I decided to just try a run of that and see how it came out. Now I had to speed it up way over the settings that I used on the diode. This does it in about one third the time makes the tags. And you can see they all really did that. They came out beautiful, and I just couldn't believe how fast they were uh, you know, able to make them once I got the setting right. This thing is, is actually fast. Now, one thing I'm going to do a follow-up video on, I'm going to dedicate to, is doing um, acrylic. Because I, that is a main reason for this uh, laser, you know, I think. And you can see these are some acrylic uh, night lights that I made with it. Use a sheet of clear acrylic and uh, just engraved and cut it and it came out gorgeous. So um, probably the next video that I do will, you know, be showing you how to properly and, you know, how to get a good job done on acrylic. And um, it's really, uh, you know, that's where this laser really shines. You can see it just does gorgeous work. So in the end, it's a, you know, it's a brand new machine without a lot of documentation out there on it yet. And um, I'm sure that, you know, in the near future, uh, 
it'll be easier to set up and um it looks like it's going to be a great great starter on a co2 laser from what i've seen so far thanks for watching please subscribe